Welcome to Discovery Watch with John Kaiser. I'm your host, Jim Goddard. John, welcome back to the show. Jim, pleasure to be back. John, is your Van Minerals back in the uranium exploration business? Jim, it really uh, doesn't look like it makes any sense that this stock is trending up. We covered it in Discovery Watch back in 2016-17 when they were using that uh, radiogenic lead isotope sampling method uh, where they looked at the clay that's at the, at the surface of the Athabasca Basin and looking for certain combinations of lead isotopes that suggest a uranium deposit is way down deep at the unconformity, decaying and spitting out these lead isotopes. And the Stewartson project, uh, it's in the Virgin River corridor, which cuts right through the middle of the basin, and it's you know, over a 1,000 meters deep, and they developed this anomaly through the regional sampling strategy, and they had Chemical as a partner earning into this, and Chemical put $5.5 million into this play, and they drilled a couple holes into the Stewartson target, and the last one missed the stock tank, and that was in 2017. And while Larry Lahusen, the CEO, felt that, okay, we've got now enough vector points to know that if there's a high-grade, unconformity-style uranium deposit present, we know where the next hole has to go. But by then, the uranium market was completely falling apart. Uh, Chemical wasn't interested in spending any more money. And they ended up uh, doing a deal where Chemical was granted a 25% stake in this project. So Eurovan technically is still in the uranium exploration business because it shares the Stewartson project of 7525. But Larry Lahusen, uh, who had been a uranium bug all his life, uh, uh, he watched what was going on in, after Fukushima. And this March uh, is the um, 10th anniversary of the of the tsunami which wiped out the Fukushima nuclear power plant, basically uh, altered the uranium, the nuclear energy landscape. Germany decided no more nuclear power, decided that uh, burning coal might be a cleaner way of uh, generating energy. And Japan still hasn't come around to restarting its nuclear energy uh, power plants on any large scale. And the uranium price has been weak. It was, you know, $20 a pound at some point. It fluttered up to $32 recently, but it's back to like $29.30 for a spot price. But Eurovan started to tickle up in December. And the stock had spent 2020 uh, languishing at a penny to two cents a share after spending half a year being halted for an RTO of an American cannabis deal, which fell apart in late 2019. And that was going to be a 10-for-1 rollback. And, and Larry LaHusen has pretty much given up on uranium exploration. He has no appetite for going back into the Athabasca Basin. And he owns about 25% of the 47 million shares out. So he was willing to sell control of the company, uh, even if it involved a 10-for-1 rollback so but he wasn't able to do any deals uh you know was has looking for either a non-resource deal or a, a resource deal uh but nothing so far has happened but what happened in december is uh when it became clear that biden was had won the uh, presidency and uh, the clean energy movement would be back on track for the united states the whole uranium sector got a lift, even though the uranium price is still very weak and the supply-demand imbalance uh, has not improved at all. So there's been this uh, all this hype about how you need nuclear energy to provide the baseline electricity for 2050 when you've shifted away completely from fossil fuel, coal, and, and natural gas. You cannot rely on the renewable solar and wind unless you've developed fantastic batteries uh, during that uh, during that period. So there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm out there for uranium. And the, the thing this week that has helped to tickle this stock up and make other uranium stocks uh, jump pretty pretty good are you know, you know, our decisions by companies to do what Chemical started doing several years ago, which is to start 
buying uranium spot if you're the kind of company that has the license that's able to do so as a speculation that these low prices, which are below almost everybody's except Kazakhstan's operating cost uh, or, or above op, uh, b- b- below operating cost, that, that this is going to change and we'll end up seeing a rally back over $100 a pound, such as we saw during that 2004 to 2006 six boom. Now, wh- the Discovery Watch company that uh, we follow that has uranium exposure is Forum Energy Metals. And all this interest in uranium has helped that stock up. It's parked around 39.40 cents. Orano, the French uh, nuclear power producer, is earning into the Fur Island project where they are drilling holes right now, a major program that could lead up to a discovery. And a junior like Forum Energy Metals uh, has a significant Athabasca Basin portfolio of prospects, all all near the rim, not the deep stuff such as Eurovan was was chasing. And if Discovery Watchers want to chase a uh, junior with uh, uranium exploration potential, go for Forum Energy Metals. As far as Eurovan is concerned, uh, Larry Lahusen says no, he's still looking for a buyer for the shell. He'll consider anything, even stuff like psychedelic mushrooms. I myself still hold my position uh, because I figure if he's going to sell it to a very strong group, uh, even with a 10-for-1 rollback, they'll probably put a deal into it that's well-structured so that even if it, say, goes from from, from $0.06 cents to $0.60 cents post uh, 10-for-1 rollback, if it, especially if it has something to do that isn't like looking for gold or, or, or uranium, uh, the upside in this kind of crazy market we have could still be substantial if it is structured right. But no, Eurovan Minerals is not back in the uranium exploration business. We'll have more with John Kaiser right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with John Kaiser. John, did Endurance Gold manage to close its financing for the Reliance Gold Project? Well, Jim, they announced it on February 25th, a $2 million financing, a, a unit deal with a half warrant at $0.31. Cents. And I said, oh, you're only going for $2 million bucks. Are you going to end up upsizing it? But then that week was when the whole resource junior sector began to fall apart. And yes, they did manage to close this financing. They got an extra $110,000 out of it, uh, but they announced closing it on Friday, March 12th. Yesterday, they announced additional results. In fact, the rest of the results for the RC hold drilled into the Eagle and the Eagle South Zone on the Reliance Gold Project, which is up in the Braylorn District of southwestern British British. Columbia, and these results continue to confirm, yes, where you get high XRF readings for arsenic uh, in, in the chips in this case because they drilled RC holes uh, to deal with the uh, very oxidized, uh, broken up uh, near surface material of this uh, two kilometer long, uh, 300 meter wide uh, shear type structure uh, between the royal shear and the treasure shear. The, the, the news is good in that uh, they are now pretty confident that not only can they use the arsenic association to predict grade in this mineralization, but they also now have a different understanding of what's going on with these zones. These in the Eagle and Eagle South zones, these are shallow dipping about 35 degrees to the southwest zones. The interpretation in the past had been that these are steeply dipping vein type zones and the next round of results uh, will be from the imperial zone which is uh, farther north where all the historical drilling activity took place most of it uh, with uh, angled holes trying to intercept these veins and they of the five holes they drilled in that area 
Three of them had decent XRF readings. This next batch of results, I'm not sure when they will get them, but these will be very important because it looks like they have the similar flat line or, or shallow dipping structures rather than the steeping, steeply dipping structures that they were chasing uh, in the past 20 years when Charlie Boitard was running running the program. If this runs, they have a significant model for what to be looking for within this corridor. Uh, with this $2 million financing uh, done, they are now ready to go back to, with RC drilling the entire corridor. Obviously, we'll start in the Eagle, Eagle Zone area uh, if they don't have the Imperial results yet. But if the Imperial results are similar, then we are dealing with a series of these shallow dipping stones zones that will likely have stacking going on as you go deeper. So they'll traverse this whole corridor with a shallow RC holes initially, and then bring in a core rig to drill these zones uh, where they uh, um, dip too deep for the RC rig to, to be worth bothering and where the material becomes fresh rather than oxidized and you want to get the core so that you can interpret the structural controls and also to drill straight down the, the corridor to see if there are stacked zones of this occurring repeatedly. And so this play is now, uh, it's one of my favorites and uh, it has been bottom fish spec value rated because uh, we didn't, they didn't really have a lot of money to pursue this drilling and it wasn't clear what the model is. But with a model now firmly in their heads as to what they should be chasing, one can see how they could build up towards a million ounce plus target of, uh, you know, five to seven gram per ton type of gold mineralization. And so, uh, this, uh, stock is one of my favorites now that I would consider as good spec value because it's now got all the pieces coming together and this is definitely a play we should watch for confirmation of a significant medium grade gold discovery in 2021. We'll have more with John Kaiser right after the break. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with John Kaiser. John, did Discovery Harbor have a big day last week? Should we start watching Discovery Harbor? You know, Discovery Harbor I had pegged as a bottom fish spec value rated company, but it wasn't really on my priority list uh, to pay attention to until about July. Now, this company raised uh, $3 million last year at 5.5 cents. It was a brutally dilutionary financing, um, well, roughly just under 55 million units with a full 10 cent warrant at the 5.5 cents. And their flagship project is the Caldera, which is in Nevada's Walker Lane. And they optioned this in 2017, but because of the tough market, they were never really able to get anything going. But as this market started to perk up uh, earlier this year, they were able to get the financing, and they initiated the permitting process. And unfortunately, the Caldera system sits within the, the U.S. Forest Service jurisdiction. And when COVID uh, hit, hit, uh, hit, 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 hit everybody with the lockdowns, things did not progress very well. They got some poor guidance uh, from the uh, uh, from, from from the permitting authorities about what they should be doing, they said, "Yeah, you don't need to do a raptor study uh, in in this part of uh, Nevada. If you're in an area where raptors nest, you need to 
do a survey to find out where those nests are so that uh, you you don't trail anywhere near there. They said, ah, don't worry about it. You'll get your permit. The nesting season is the second quarter of the year, sort of roughly April April through June, and uh, and you'll have your permit uh, by fall. You can do your drilling, then you can do your 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 survey survey next year. Well, it turned out that the, this archaeological agency, uh, because this area has workings going back a hundred years, this is a low sulfidation epithermal system. Uh, uh, the, the project uh, uh, has about uh, eight major target areas. It's had 142 holes drilled into historically, all of it shallow, and it picks up this uh, erratic gold mineralization, high grade here, not so high grade there. Uh, it's never been systematically explored to deliver a resource estimate. And Mark Fields uh, got involved with this, and, and the company optioned that uh, their thinking was, you know, the this has never been drilled deeper than 200 meters. And in the low sulfidation um epithermal model, the boiling zone will be deeper. And they did a lot of geochemical sampling and came away with this, the, the uh, impression that, you, you know, this is still quite high up in the system. The boiling system is not near surface. This needs to be drilled. It, it needs to be tested in that 200 to 800 meter depth range. And so all the money was going to go towards a major program, a uh, 10 drill sites permitted, uh, uh, drill these uh, holes testing to a vertical depth of 300 to 500 meters and demonstrate that Bonanza gold veins are present within this project. But then they got the runaround, uh, the, the archaeological studies uh, needed to be um, you know, something extra done. And next thing you know, it was winter. This is up in the range, so they didn't really want to drill winter. And then, of course, uh, they don't have the permit quite yet, but uh, they do expect that when this 60-day uh, stop work order that the Department of Interior issued on on January 20th, when the, when the government changed, uh, this expires on March 20th. Uh, uh, they think they're very close to getting the permits to drill, but they won't be able to drill until July. So to make the long story short. I wasn't really expecting this stock to suddenly be halted and resume trading and do 35 million shares in one day and 50 mi 15 million shares the next day. And the reason was quite a surprise. They announced a very strong farm out deal on a property called Fortuity 89, which is about eight, uh, five kilometers west of the Caldera project. And Newcrest is the Australian company, which was in Nevada about 10 years ago and then gave up, but it has come back looking for gold systems. And the Fortuity 89 claims was part of the package, the Caldera package, that Discovery Harbor auctioned from Genesis Gold, which is Don Merrick's and John Zimmerman's company. And uh, they recently sold their royalty portfolio to Metalla, the royalty company for about four million US in, in stock and cash. So it's Metalla that actually owns the one percent royalty on the Caldera. And it turns out on this uh Fortuity eighty nine prospect to the West, which Newcrest had generated on its own through uh using remote sensing data and uh there's one outcrop in there which the claim covered, but because of the area of interest uh clause in it uh, when Newcrest approached uh, uh, um, Discovery Harbor about possibly doing a deal on Caldera, it turned out that, yeah, they also owned this part out there, and Discovery Harbor didn't want to do the deal, a deal on the, on the Caldera project because it already raised the money, and it's looking to do a score a high-grade gold home run on that play. But they did this strong deal, which allows... Um, uh, uh, Newcrest over five years to, to earn 65% by spending 31.5 million US and it has a one and a half million dollar US firm commitment in the first year. And almost all of this property, which is bigger than Caldera, sits out in the basin gravels. It's, it's pretty much an undercover, undercover story and Newcrest and, uh, 
uh, Discovery Harbor concur that this appears to be a an entirely preserved low sulfidation epithermal system. Uh, the gold is anomalous. Uh, what was drilled in the past was shallow holes by Kennecott, uh, you know, 2040 PPD. Nothing particularly interesting, but that was done in the 80s when the, the, the geochemistry of these alteration systems was not as well understood as it is today. And with the sampling they've done in that outcropping, small outcropping area, you know, I say this is very high level in the system. And the footprint appears to be substantial, which explains why this deal is so strong. The deal is interesting because once uh, uh, the uh, 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 Newcrest gets to 65%, it has the option to go to 75% by delivering a PEA. But if you've already uh, spent $31 million U.S., you probably have everything needed to deliver a PEA on the spot. And when they do deliver the PEA to the company, they would only have a couple years to do this, then it's already built into the deal that Newcrest will be required to buy out the remaining 25% at fair value based on standard industry valuation methods, which presumably is the discounted cash flow model which uh, generates a net present value. So if this ends up being worth a billion bucks, um, Newcrest in, in five to seven years would be in a position to uh, pay uh, $250 million to Discovery Harbor for this project that wasn't even on the website. And this is in BLM jurisdiction, and there's no trees out in the flats. There are no historical workings that could keep it get the archaeologists and preservation people uh, excited. Uh, this is too far south for the sage, sage grouse habitat problem. So uh, uh, it could be that Newcrest is, might be drilling even sooner than Discovery Harbor is on the Caldera project. However, Newcrest still needs to do some geophysical work and some more uh, uh, geochemistry work to, to properly define the, the, the invisible structures beneath the the, the gravel cover of this property, but I suspect that uh, by the end of the summer, there will be two significant drill programs going, one by Newcrest on the Fortuity 89 prospect, and the other by Discovery Harbor um, on, the, uh, on, on the Caldera project, and we're a little bit early in flagging Discovery Harbor as a Discovery Watch company, because until they get confirmation that they have will have the drill permit, so they can start in the summer. We don't know that it will happen, but one has to be optimistic. Newcrest is unlikely to have any difficulties with the BLM getting its permits, so we'll have at least one drill program going uh, in testing for a low sulfidation epithermal discovery uh, uh, by September. Ideally, we have two, and we have Caldera starting in July, and by September, we should be in the running to start getting assays back from the lab telling us whether indeed they do have the boiling zones. And these boiling zones, uh, they don't need to have developed gold and, and or silver enriched uh, um, bonanza veins. Uh, they, 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 it's not, it doesn't have to happen. So it is still very speculative, and that's why the stock's still sitting here around six to nine cents with a big overhang of warrants. But what this uh, Newcrest announcement did with these two days of like 50 million shares of trading is it rotated probably much of that long position from that 55 million unit private placement into new hands, investors who understand the story, who are willing to wait the three to six months uh, before this uh, drilling program can get underway. And, of course, the placees, uh, they will have clipped their 10-cent warrants, but uh, uh, they won't be able to get any value from those unless they exercise them. So there's another potential $5 million financing kicking in later this year when this Caldera and the uh, Fortuity 89 stories go into uh, drilling season. John, thank you so much for the update. You're welcome, Jim. We've been speaking with John Kaiser, his website, kaiserresearch.com. I'm Jim Goddard. 
Comments made on Discovery Watch are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at HowStreet.com. Discovery Watch is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.